Today we are going to embark on a very fun journey in installing this 12 volt system into the back of the 80 series Land Cruiser here. So what I have is a 280 amp hour lithium battery which is going to live in the second row seat area. I'm going to build an apparatus in order to house that and this is going to be our house battery. It will be connected to our start battery via this charger. This is a DC DC charger and this is going to take charge current from the starting battery and it's a 40 amp charger, so it'll be charging our 280 amp lithium battery. We're gonna use this for all of our accessories, our fridge, our lights, heaters maybe, diesel heater, all of the above. Today we're gonna be working on installing an apparatus that bolts into where the seat bolt holes are and build some sort of a framework so that we can mount all of our accessories where we want them and we can see everything, kind of like Shano's and four wheel drive 24 seven setup that he used to have in the back of city. I'm kind of copying a little bit of what he did there, but of course this is all custom at this point, so we're kind of embarking on unknown territory. This DC-DC charger is really cool because it actually has a reverse charge function, so in case your start battery gets low, you can use the current from your lithium or house battery in order to charge your start battery. It also has inputs for solar, and then it'll have this signal wire for your alternator for smart alternators, but this is a dumb alternator because it's a 95 Toyota Land Cruiser. We also have this Lightime battery monitor, which is going to tell us what type of charge we're getting from the battery, what sort of amps are being withdrawn from the system, and then probably the most important part of this whole setup is this 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. This is going to allow me to use a 110 plug-in and convert 12 volt to 120 volt or 110 volt. I wanna have this all set up so that I can see everything that's going on. I'm going to be using breakers in order to diagnose or turn off if I get a surge, if I get too hot, if I start a fire. I wanna be able to see everything that's going on and be able to diagnose it really quickly. Just for reference, 280 amp hours out of a 12 volt is around 3,500 watt hours. So. To put it in reference, our little Jackery is 300 watts, so this is more than 10 times the amount. Might be a little bit of overkill, but I figured why not, you know, go big or go home, get the most amount of watt hours as possible so that we can have lights whenever we can need them, we can have our fridge running all night, etc. I've never taken on a 12 volt project of this size or length, so this is going to be a multiple video build. But today what we're going to be working on is using this one inch steel tubing in order to fabricate basically like a headache rack in the back of the Land Cruiser here that'll bolt into the existing seat bolt holes. Well, we gotta start somewhere, so let's get started. The very first thing I wanna do is establish these crossbars made out of this one inch tubing to build a base from. The bolts are going right into the seat belt harness or at least where they used to be, so I figure this is gonna be strong enough for this whole apparatus. After welding some steel plate to the tubing and then drilling holes for the seat bolts to go through, I then measured to cut the bridge piece, which will tie this whole thing together. This will give the structure enough rigidity to hold up all the extra weight that I'm going to be putting on this 3 quarter inch plywood. I'm trying to stay as true as possible to the interior body lines, so I'm going to have to cut this piece with a little bit of angle on each end. Marking the angle I needed with a paint pen, I then used a chop saw in lieu of an angle grinder because the bottom die allows you to find the exact angle that you need. This was the last piece of long tubing that I had, so I wanted to make sure that I was cutting small sections at a time until it fit just perfect. Then I started tacking the two pieces together. This is really thin wall steel, so I didn't want to burn it in too much, so I had my settings on pretty low. I used sort of a pulse technique so that I wouldn't burn any holes through the thin material. I think it came out looking pretty good and I'm about ready to assemble the piece of plywood onto this scaffolding. Clamping the apparatus to a piece of 3 quarter inch plywood, I used a jigsaw to get the exact measurements. I think this thickness of plywood is a perfect amount for bolting accessories to with a 1 inch screw or whatever type of hardware you need. I could only fit 4 foot by 4 foot pieces of plywood in the back of the Land Cruiser, so it's going to create this kind of empty looking space on each side, but I'll just have to live with it. The biggest elephant in the room is that, yeah, I'm going to be losing my second and third row seats, but in this case, I think the trade-off is well worth it. So we are pretty much done with the scaffolding or the structure for the dual battery system or the lithium battery system rather. I've gone and coated it in some marine carpet and then we fastened it to our scaffolding which we've also painted black in a truck bed coating. We're fastened to both the seat belt mounts and it's plenty sturdy. It'll, it'll be fine. We've also bolted in to where the seats go just with these two bolts here, 
because the bolts on these far sides would get in the way of what we want to mount. So obviously we have our fridge in here. Not really liking how this is mounted currently because of the angle and being close to the seat and having to move the seat to open it up. Probably going to swivel this around like so and we'll figure out a way to secure it probably just bolt in some mounts and then use some nylon straps for that. I didn't want to have this in the back of the Land Cruiser because then we have to figure out a slide and a drop down if it's going to be on top of drawers. So I may end up redoing this whole thing and adding sides and making this a platform, so to speak, so that I can put stuff on top of it. But then you have to figure out a lid for that as well just to open it. But what we're focusing on now is installing this DC-DC charger. And this is from Lee Time as well. And it has some really cool functions as I showed you earlier with this reverse charge. You can select your type of battery. Uh, we're obviously going to be using lithium. So we'll get this set up in the next few days here comes with your Anderson sockets for your solar, which we will use. This is going to be the lead going to this lithium battery. And then this is what will come from the battery. So as you can see, I've already plumbed in a six gauge wire going to the back. So this will be going into the input on this and then the output will go to the battery. Obviously, I'm going to wait on some bus bars to arrive for our ground and our power. I actually routed this really clean, just pulling up all the seams here. And it's all nicely tucked. <clears throat> you can see a little bit there, but that plastic panel will cover that. It's coming out through the firewall there by the clutch master cylinder, going into a 60 amp breaker, which I will leave off because I don't want to send all this voltage to the back and cause voltage drop nonstop. So when I'm going on trips, I'll go ahead and reset the breaker. They call for a 60 amp breaker, so that's what we went with. <clears throat> I'll probably need to get some sort of marine terminal soon as we're running out of space, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. For pretty much all of the two and six gauge connections, I'm using copper lugs and soldering them together with a butane torch. The nice thing about soldering is that when you get the end hot, it sucks through all the solder and makes a really good connection. I do also like those large crimpers, but this is just what I had, so it's what I went with. Of course I use the heat shrink sleeve on the top of all of these and it creates a nice professional clean look. So after many hours of crimping and drilling holes and just running wires, I am proud to say that we are pretty much ready to go. So let's trace the power. This is the six gauge wire coming from the battery with the 60 amp breaker going into an Anderson plug, which goes into the battery charger, which is on right now. And I've switched it over to lithium, obviously, because we're running lithium. It's not on because the car is not on. There is a blue wire here that you'll need for a small smart alternator, but our alternator is dumb. And this is the output wire. So again, going into another Anderson plug, I've tucked all the wires behind and I'll show you that in a minute, just to add a little bit more cleanliness, even though this doesn't look really clean right now, this output wire is going behind and into this 50 amp breaker which goes to the battery. So that will charge the battery. I fastened the battery to this board that mounts to the seat bolt holes with three straps, two going over top, and then one up front. It's nestled right up against this back plate. And we had to cut a hole in this plastic piece in order to fit all this. I could have done it cleaner, but I just want to get this thing running and see how it works. The last wire coming from this DC-DC charger is for this solar input, which I have Verify that it does work, but it's not really sunny out here in northern Idaho in February. So this is the battery monitor. So I'll turn that on in a second here, but I've routed the wires through the back for this inverter. This is a 2000 watt sine wave inverter. And we've run all of our grounds into this bus bar as well as our hot leads into this bus bar for the positive. And then this is our shunt. So the shunt is connected via these small little wires here to the back of this battery monitor, which again, I just routed through the back. So we have a big ground wire coming off of the bus bar to the P negative terminal. And the B negative terminal is this big wire, which will be connected to the battery itself. So theoretically, if we touch this to the negative, we should get everything to light up. So let's try it. All right, so I've loosely connected the negative terminal onto the battery. So everything should be connected. We have our battery monitor on, which needs to be calibrated. So we're gonna do that next. 
but it's not drawing hardly any wattage. Um, these things run on almost no battery. The inverter is off, but we'll kick it on here. Inverter is on and it turned on the light for this battery monitor. Looks like the inverter is drawing six watts just to be on. There's a little discrepancy in between the voltage on the inverter, which it's reading 110 volts and 13.4 volts. And we're reading 13.2. So we need to set this up, which means that we need to fully charge the battery and then tell it the parameters, which is 280 amp hours. And then when it's fully charged, we'll discharge the battery. And then that will calibrate the system and then give us our accurate reading as far as the percentage. You can see right now we're running negative 0.4 amps, which means that the inverter is taking away from the battery. You can see indicated by those downward facing arrows that we're taking power away from the battery. Now, if we turn the inverter off, then it's basically just homeostasis. We're seeing the volt, the wattage drop for what it's being taken away. The, d the backlight dims and then we're back to zero. This again, doesn't take hardly any uh, power to run this little monitor. So you have to kind of fasten it in some way. I just used another piece of board and then drilled out from the back in order to run that wire into the shunt. And then of course there's a little positive wire going to the bus bar to power the shunt or to power the uh, battery monitor. Let's show you the back. Not super clean, but I've just ran a bunch of wires behind here in order to gain a little bit more cleanliness again on the front and just use some little fasteners in order to keep the wires tucked and keep them from moving and hopefully not coming out. Lots of plans for the back of the Land Cruiser here with the drawer system and I'm still trying to figure out whether or not I want to put this fridge in here. There is plenty of room, so I'll probably end up doing that. I want to be able to build another box maybe right here too to keep all my charging accessories, cords, cables, batteries, because when I'm out filming, I have a lot of electrical demands for recharging. I've also ran a two gauge wire going from the negative bus bar into these uh, seat bolt holes that I've fastened this whole board onto, so it's grounded the chassis. But this positive wire is a little bit too long, so I've ran out of lugs. I'm gonna head to the hardware store and get another lug so I can shorten this and make it look a little bit cleaner. But that'll give us an opportunity to see how much this thing charges with the alternator on the vehicle running. So let's start it up. So the battery is charging now. We can see from the DC-DC controller and we can see that we're jumping up 480, 500 watts, 550 watts. So this thing, if I'm doing my math correctly, is definitely charging above 40 amps. So we're gonna drive this around a little bit and see how much charge we get out of this just from driving around town. So I drove around for about 15 minutes and got 17 amp hours charged into the battery from the alternator, but I did read it wrong. You're supposed to discharge the battery first. So the quickest way to do that is gonna be with the inverter. So let's figure out something we can plug in to really drain this thing down. Something I didn't really think about and I probably gonna have to readjust this is how close all this is and the lack of the ability to be able to get a plug in here and the wire routing, but we'll figure that out later. I think this is gonna be the quickest way to drain the battery. This is a, my wife's hair dryer, and uh, we'll turn it on and see how much it draws. So we'll just put it on low. We'll try that out. It says it's drawing 1,000 watts. 1.1 kilowatt, 100 amps. So that's gonna drain it pretty quick. We'll keep this on and monitor whether or not these wires get super hot. I feel like this is gonna take forever, so let's turn it up to high. And we jump to 1300 watts. 1.5 kilowatts, that'll drain it. Well, we've been running the hair dryer for about an hour and eight minutes now, and the inverter is starting to 
chirp and make this really loud noise. I actually should read the manual and see if that's damaging it or what. So uh, I would assume we're getting pretty low. And see here we're at, you know, it's gonna say zero because we haven't calibrated it, but I'm trying to run this all the way down so that we know where 0% state of charge is. All right, so we have presumably ran this down all the way to no state of charge, or at least it won't power any devices from the inverter. So we're gonna call this zero. We're showing 11.8 volts, but I think it probably has a little bit left. I'm sure it does, but we're gonna call this zero and calibrate it. It's showing here that on this curve that 10 to 12 volts is 0% state of charge and 100% state of charge is greater than 13.3 volts. They send you these batteries at half charge so that it's safe. They tell you to you know, recharge it uh, to get it up to 100% and keep it there. But the nice thing about lithium batteries is that you can bring them down to 0% state of charge like we are now and it doesn't damage it like lead acid batteries do. So let's set this thing up. It says to discharge battery system until it stops working like we did, put aside for 30 minutes. So we'll wait 30 minutes and then we'll hold the down arrow on this when we get back. So now that we waited for 30 minutes, we went down to where it wasn't even reading the battery. I wasn't showing any voltage, but turned the truck on and it did start charging it. Charger's working. So let's see what parameters we can set here. So we press and hold that key and that gets us into this menu and we're gonna set it to 280 amp hours. All right, so now we should be able to go ahead and drive this. We could use the solar panel if we had sun, but we don't have sun. So we're gonna go ahead and drive this and see, driving for, we'll set a timer for 30 minutes and we'll see what the state of charge is after that. So I only ended up driving around for about 20 minutes and it drew it up to 8% charge. So I'm guessing that it's gonna take about five hours to charge the battery full from complete dead, which is kind of what I expected, 3,500 watt hours, 500 watt charge, and it, you know, has solar too, so I'm not too worried about the amount of time, and I'm not gonna be using the full watt hour of this battery all the time when I go camping. I'm not gonna be running a hair dryer, so. I've also uh, put the caps on the bus bars and then installed a little 12 volt socket, cigarette socket to a Blue C fuse panel. So I haven't wired that into the bus bar yet, but that'll allow me to charge my accessories and I could actually run the fridge off of that too. But I'm really excited for the ability to use this 12 volt system over landing and all the different possibilities that it offers. Another cool thing about this come and swap is the charging system that comes with it. This is a 120 amp alternator compared to the 90, I think, that came on the Land Cruiser, maybe 95 or 100. But you can actually get an upgraded 200 amp alternator, which wouldn't change anything in my setup because I'm just running a 40 amp charger. I could upgrade, but that'll be plenty for my demands and the price was good. So all in all with this setup, I'm into it for about a thousand dollars. Um, Lightime did send this battery to me free of charge, but I did purchase all of the other charging components as well as all the hardware, the wood, the marine carpet, etc. But it's better to take advantage of your alternator. If you have like some sort of a jackery or something like that, you're still gonna need a way to charge it. Some people may not need to charge it. If you buy like a 2000 watt Jackery or Blue Eddy, you can just bring it with you and use the charging for the time that you're there. But I like the ability to make use of my alternator and diesel basically to charge this battery and get the most out of the charging capabilities. Another cool thing we're gonna try in a later video is to try and use this welder with this inverter. I'm not sure if it'll have enough power in order to lay some beads down, but I definitely wanna give it a try. And if it works, like, this is essentially a welding rig now. I could go work on the pipeline. Just kidding, this is just a flux core welder from Harbor Freight, but I think it's gonna work, but that's for a later video. Well, I think that's a good spot to wrap this video up. We now have an awesome 12 volt system in the back of the Land Cruiser. I'm gonna make use of the space where I'm sitting now. I had originally thought of putting a fridge here, but I'm not gonna be able to package that the way I want. So I'm gonna end up building like some sort of a toolbox or I don't know, some sort of modular drawer system or something like that. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below and we'll see you in the next one.